Okay, this is working, yes. So, hello everyone, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Marco Tognon, I'm a postdoc uh, in the art team, let's say, so I'm postdoc in the RIS team, and but in particular, I'm working on uh, aerial vehicles and on the art uh, uh, testbed. So today, what I will present is indeed the uh, art, that is, it stands for aerial robotic uh, testbed. Uh, that is a um, a part of the of the RIS uh, uh, lab hel um, held by Antonio Franchi uh, st that started working on uh, here basically six years uh, ago together with the help of the of our engineer Anthony Made. So mm, just to briefly introduce uh, what what we are working on, we are working on aerial vehicles. But what we are trying to do is to go from uh, standard, uh, let's say, contact-free uh, applications like photography, uh, surveillance, and so on, where there is no uh, contact with the environment. What we are actually trying to do is to go beyond this uh, limited uh, field of application and trying to uh, have aerial vehicles that are able to interact with the environment exchanging uh, forces. So among this uh, big topic, Basically, our uh, methodology is to study fundamental models uh, and methods for design, control, and state of uh, and state estimation of both uh, uh, single robot uh, systems, like the one that you see here, starting from the design of new platforms for contact-based manipulation and also other type of tasks involving uh, cables, but still physical interaction. Going uh, also to more uh, multi-robot systems involving si um, a multiple set of aerial vehicles or, evi or even uh, hybrid systems with flying and grounded uh, uh, manipulators. And how our approach is basically goes from the design, uh, starting from the design because when it comes to physical interaction, new platforms has to be designed. So what I will present indeed in terms of platform, you will see new types of uh, uh, of platforms and then we uh, go through the model of those uh, new systems and final uh, control and, and, and estimation to make them work and actually perform a new type of, uh, uh, of tasks. So the group, as I said, uh, the responsible is Antonio Franchi, but then uh, during the year we had uh, many uh, students, PhD, visiting and so on. And we also grow in terms of uh, facilities. So at the beginning we had uh, only one uh, indoor uh, arena that perhaps you saw yesterday or even uh, this morning with uh, many uh, platforms. Uh, but starting from uh, last year we also have an outdoor arena where we can uh, perform additional tests whenever we want because it's a closed uh, arena by, by net, so we don't need uh, um, any type of permissions. So, uh, and basically all this work led us to, to work, first of all, on quadrotor-based uh, platforms uh, for uh, uh, that we used for different type of uh, application like landing and takeoff on slope surface, or we even equipped uh, standard quadrotor platforms uh, with uh, um, uh, with robotic arm and as, as I said uh, multi-robot system cooperating together through uh, through cables and then uh, but uh, trying to address uh, physical interaction tasks we saw the limitation of uh, standard quadrotors so we actually designed new systems that are more suited for aerial physical interaction that are what we uh, what has been called the fully actuated uh, platforms meaning that they can actually control both position and orientation at the same time and in particular they are able to provide forces in multiple direction making them actually suited for uh, to interact with the environment and here you basically can see some examples of those platforms uh, equipped with uh, robotic arms simple one off or two of arms, uh, also collaborating with uh, grounded manipulators. And as I said, recently we start working on uh, outdoor uh, tasks. So trying to bring all our expertise on physical interaction, but outdoor. So now I will start the more technical uh, part, trying to present uh, our um, our platforms. As I said, we all our uh, all our work is based on two types of uh, of platform. One is a standard quadrotor, so four 
uh, propellers uh, placed in a collinear way. You all know about that. And the second one instead is a, is, is a fully actuated system that we call Tiltex, because indeed it has six propellers that are tilted in order to get this nice property of uh, full actuation. But in terms of hardware, basically they are all similar, so we don't have much to, to change, to, to go from one or the other. Basically it's just uh, some pieces from a uh, microcopter, actually the motors and, and the aluminum frames, but all the rest are 3D printed parts. Indeed, most of our platforms are uh, developed by scratch uh, using a lot of uh, 3D printer that allows to do different type of uh, prototy uh, prototypes in a very short uh, uh, time. And then in terms of uh, electronics, all of them are equipped with uh, um, electronic speed controllers that controls in closed loop the velocity of each propellers. Indeed, we use uh, bo uh, still microcopter uh, asks, but on which we programmed our own framework, uh, firmware, that is able to control in closed loop the velocity of the propellers. In this way, we can really assess the thrust that each propeller is, is providing. And then in terms of uh, flight controller, we were using, uh, again, uh, microcopter, but recently we moved uh, on uh, uh, Chimera Paparazzi, and even in this case, uh, we still have a in-house developed uh, firmware. So we really handle uh, the full chain of control from the control of the, of the motors to the uh, management uh, of all the embedded uh, sensors. And then normally we have an onboard uh, PC, like an Odroid or, a, a, or an Intel NAC, on which it runs the actual uh, high-level controller. So normally in our setup, there, are, there is no uh, controller uh, running on the flight control. We don't have the classical approach in which you have the attitude controller running in the flight controller and then a high level position controller running on, on the onboard PC. But actually in our case the flight control is basically doing an interface from the uh, motor controls to the high level controller running, everything running on board on the, uh, on the PC. And additionally to that, so we have a, a standard uh, sensor like the IMU and the magnetometer. Uh, and then when we do uh, experiments indoor, we use a standard OptiTrack opti motion capture system to get the position and orientation of the platform or any other objects present in the, in the arena. But now since we are, as I said, we are moving outdoor, we also are using GPS uh, uh, sensor and other cameras uh, like the Intel RealSense to have uh, an estimation of the, uh, of the state. But so, as you, uh, as you may uh, understand, the hardware is basically the same for both, uh, uh, both thi systems. This is why it's really fast to go from one to the, uh, to the other. Uh, regarding the, uh, the software architecture, there is basically a um, hardware uh, level, let's say, on which we find the system that can be the quadrotor or the tiltex. It doesn't matter. The interface is always the same. Uh, then we have the controllers of the ESC and the and the flight controller that basically does as a, uh, a, an interface through um, a serial port to the high level controller. So uh, regarding the high level controller, we have a first uh, hardware abstraction layer. So we find again some uh, modules that works as an interface for the hardware, either the, the platform or other um, external uh, motion capture systems. And then we have all the part related to the high level controller. So the ones that actually uh, receive, uh, for example, the, the measurement from the sensor and compute the new control output for the, uh, for the platform. And our uh, actually uh, framework that is based uh, on, uh, on Genome and using as a, middle, a middleware Pocalypse, it allows to basically code uh, either in, uh, in C++, so you can actually code your own control, so you can either use the, uh, the module that we already uh, developed, that I will present uh, later, or you can actually uh, develop your own controller either in C++ using, using Genome, and will be, um, it has a very nice feature of being plug and play, so you can just uh, do your own module with the correct interface with the other and will uh, uh, automatically uh, work, let's say. Or if you are more familiar with uh, MATLAB Simulink, then you can also uh, basically break any 
of those uh, connections, develop uh, your, uh, your module in, in MATLAB Simulink, and still it will, it will work. So we have a basically a nice interface from Simulink to all the, uh, basically all the uh, frameworks that interfaces with the, uh, with the hardware. So, and here, yeah, in terms of documentation, here you have all the links uh, related to the main uh, uh, materials. So here the first two links are uh, regarding our uh, way of, uh, of writing code using this genome that is a code uh, generator. It's a nice feature because it allows you to write code in a proper way and in that way you then can generate code for any kind of uh, middleware, either ROS if you prefer working with it, but we actually use Pocalypse, that, uh, 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 another mi middleware developed here in, in LAS that we actually use because it's much faster when it comes to uh, aerial vehicles on which you need to, uh, to exchange mes messages at a high uh, frequency. And then uh, we are also developing uh, an art documentation, so a, a complete documentation of our framework that will include also uh, simple tutorials and demos for, new, uh, for newcomers. And this is uh, a more detailed uh, scenario, or a, st a standard scenario, I would say, of our software uh, architecture and control uh, uh, modules. As I said, we have a first uh, uh, hardware uh, interface that can be also um, a simulated. I will speak about it uh, later. And then we have uh, modules to basically capture the, uh, the state of the drone from, uh, uh, for example, a motion capture system. And then in the classical uh, uh, control uh, framework, what we have is a, posi a, a state estimator that in this case is based on a UKF that filters uh, that, that fuse basically all uh, all measurements coming from the IMU, OptiTrack, GPS, or whatever other uh, sensor that you might have. Then we have a position controller, and here we have different type of uh, position controllers, uh, ones uh, for unidirectional thrust vehicles, like quadrotor, and other for um, fully actuated uh, one. We also have uh, additional modules to do physical interaction. So for example, admittance filters, uh, branch observers, and so on. And then to close the loop, an hardware uh, driver. And actually to perform a full experiment, what is only missing is the trajectory tracking, is a, is a trajectory generator. That in, this, in our case is a simple uh, planner, I will know, is a actually trajectory generator based on spline. So you just define uh, set points and it will provide smooth trajectories for the, for the system. And on top of that, you can then have a, a supervisor uh, using any kind of scripting uh, languages like uh, TCL or actually MATLAB is also, uh, is also one possibility. And then as, uh, as I said, so all this framework can be run with the real uh, system to perform a real experiments or in a completely transparent way in simulation. So we actually, re uh, recently we developed uh, a gazebo based uh, simulator uh, that we use for the physics. But then inside we simulate the low level hardware interface. This means that our, uh, let's say the, the firmware of the paparazzi or even the low level control of the motors are simulated inside the, uh, the simulator. And this means that we can uh, switch from uh, a real experiment to simulation in a completely transparent way. It's just that, uh, okay, in simulation there will be the simulator running and instead in the real uh, experiment there will be the real platform. But then no need of uh, uh, much change, uh, changes in the, in the code. And here, for example, you find again the fly crane that I, that I show you uh, before. So what we do, we first test our um, controllers, methods, uh, and so on in simulation, like for the fly crane or for the tiltex here trying to grab a, a, a brick and then we go through to the uh, to the experiments. Uh, in terms of uh, um, skills that are required for someone that will come uh, at our lab, as I said, one can either use, if he's more comfortable with C++, can code directly, is code on a, on a genome module that can directly run on board and make it fly, or uh, recently, we actually hosted uh, two 
um, professors uh, that were more uh, familiar with MATLAB, but then our interface was really friendly with, the, with that, so they were able to code everything in MATLAB and still interface with the, uh, with the real uh, platform. So just to mention the, the next uh, step for, for us, so we are planning to increase our activity in the outdoor uh, um, experiments. So uh, eventually our platform will be much more integrated in terms of uh, outdoor uh, sensors. And for this, in this line, uh, we are actually going to participate to the MB Zirk uh, 2020 challenge, if you might uh, know about it. And we are also going to develop uh, what we call the Art Square. So as uh, someone you might know, uh, uh, Antonio Franchi is going to move to Twente, to the University of, of uh, Twente. And so our goal is to create a joint lab in which there will be uh, an exchange of, uh, of framework. And thanks to the fact that our system is really modular, uh, hopefully the integration will go smoothly. <laughs> So uh, with this, I conclude my, my talk. And if you have any kind of uh, technical uh, or scientific questions, I will be uh, happy to, to reply. Exactly. So what we have is the, the onboard PC. Uh, we have a, an, an Android or an Internac on which uh, we run a, a standard uh, Ubuntu installation. Uh, and, and then we connect this uh, PC through USB and, and, and serial port. And we do all the communication in a, in a serial, uh, with a serial uh, protocol. And what we send exactly is uh, the motor commands uh, for, the, for the propellers. We don't send high level uh, uh, like roll PHO because all the control uh, part is done on board. So you can send the same to the uh, environment? Yeah. So that's enough to have the real time control? Yes. So because uh, our modules uh, are very, for the moment, are very light. So as you can see, it's just a UKF, a simple more or less controller, th there is not much like uh, uh, MPCs uh, like uh, controllers, although we are working on that. So we already saw that perhaps is uh, also in this case uh, enough. But as I, uh, just to tell you, every uh, components for us runs at uh, one kilohertz. So even though they are not perfectly real time, there is not much problem because we are running at a frequency for which the real uh, time uh, constraint is not uh, is not necessary <laughs>